A little bit about me, I, I entered the business in 1987. I joined NAFA uh, the year that I uh, got in the business, so 37 years of membership in NAFA, Indiana. And um, uh, that's about it. So, um, so a, a couple of, uh, I guess probably starting with just kind of the benefits of social media in general. Um, so social media can be a powerful tool for financial advisors to connect with clients and prospects. Um, it, it allows them to build trust, establish a strong brand presence. And um, here are some tips for financial advisors to effectively le leverage social media. First and foremost, you wanna define your, your brand. Uh, your social media presence should reflect your brand's values and missions. And, and once you do that, then you can have consistency in your messaging, your visual, visuals, your tone uh, to help make your brand recognizable and memorable. Uh, the uh, second piece of advice is to you know, educate your audience. Uh, you know, share information, share informative content that addresses common financial questions and challenges. Uh, and, and this will help position you as a knowledgeable authority in the field. Um, engage thoughtfully. So if, if you're going to go out and post on social media, you also have to go in and watch for responses, watch for comments and messages. Um, Nobody wants to engage with you and then be ignored. Nobody wants to engage with you and then just have that the response uh, go completely you know, unaddressed. So be sure to respond to your comments, your messages, and engage with other use, users. And, and basically use the tool to build relationships through meaning, meaningful uh, interaction. Uh, Pulse regularly uh, is, is one of the tips um, you know, maintaining a consistent posting schedule to, to keep your audience engaged without overwhelming them. Um, and content, quality content, uh, is more important than quantity. Um, generally speaking, um, so I guess, first of all, you have to be, you have to stay compliant uh, in your uh, respective company, your respective agency. And so know which social, social media sites you're allowed to post uh, on and which ones you're not. Uh, in my particular practice, I can only use a Facebook business, a Facebook business page and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, so I can't use TikTok, I can't use Twitter. Uh, but if you can, and if you are, here are the recommended uh, number of posts that you should do weekly, uh, according to the experts, if you will. Um, if you're on Instagram, you should be posting about five to 10 times a week. And that's the same for TikTok, um, Facebook and LinkedIn. The suggested number of posts you want to have is about one to three times a week. Um, use stories and antidotes. So share success stories and, and relatable anecdotes that highlight your expertise and the positive impact of your services, but obviously without you know, revealing any personal client information. Um, monitor trends and insights. I'm sure most of you do this. If not all of you are doing this, you're staying updated with industry trends. Um, you know, as you find information, uh, new information, information that you, you know, your target audience should know, use social media uh, to you know, go ahead and, and, and get that information out uh, to your, you know, your clients and your prospects and, and those people that you're connected with on social media. Um, you can also monitor your insights on your social media pages. So um, all of your social media pages will have an analytics uh, area to help you understand you know, who's clicking on your on your posts, uh, who's viewing on your posts and so forth. And so th that'll help kind of uh, guide your strategy and help you tailor your services. Um, as I just mentioned, make sure you're staying compliant, make sure that you're staying professional. Um, I would, you know, I would avoid, I, not everybody does. I, I see some of my colleagues uh, in, in our profession who will kind of uh, get a little sideways on this. Uh, I, I would just suggest that you know you stay away from polarizing items. 
uh, I would use my social media page, especially my business social media page to you know, weigh in on abortion or on politics or on religion or anything like that. So stay professional, uh, adhere to industry regulations and, and just maintain professionalism. Um, and then, you know, focus on your target audience. So understand who, you're, who it is you're trying to reach, understand who your ideal clients are, and then tailor that content to meet uh, your interests and needs. Leverage different platforms, right? There's no uh, one platform out there. There's a ton, as I just mentioned. Um, typically, LinkedIn, or at least for me, LinkedIn happens to get the most uh, likes for what I'm doing, the most uh, inner engagement uh, for what I'm doing in my financial advisory practice. Um, I, I happen to have another business uh, that uh, I, I promote on social media. Uh, in that particular business, Facebook by far outweighs anything that I do on LinkedIn. So, it, so know who you're trying to target and, and, and um, you know, leverage the platform. Make sure you're leveraging all the platforms, but make sure you're focused on um, you know, the one that's you know, really hitting your target audience. And then last but not least, Make sure or it's recommended uh, that you're util utilizing visual content. So infographics, charts, videos uh, can just be more engaging and easier to understand than, than you know, going in and writing a real long uh, dissertation, right? A, a real long text heavy post, uh, which just tend to, to get over uh, overlooked, first of all. And they just don't do a very good job of explaining, you know, complex uh, financial concepts like, you know, a simplified chart or, or graph can do. Um, okay, so um, there's controversy over whether you should use hashtags in your posts or not use hashtags in your posts. Um, some people swear that you have to use them a lot. Some some say that you know with with the uh, internet searches that are out there now and with the advent of AI, that they are less uh, important to, to maybe even arguably not important at all. I'd say the general consensus is um, you can and it probably should use maybe one to two hashtags uh, when you are uh, doing a, a social media post. Um, obviously you want to uh, you, you wanna use those again, uh, based on the article that you're posting and also uh, dependent on the audience you're trying to target. Um, you know, some popular uh, hashtags that you might use are finance or financial literacy, lit, I'm sorry, financial literacy, uh, personal finance, uh, invest, money, finance tips, wealth management, financial advice, uh, investing in the economy are, are probably you know some some good ones to consider using. Uh, note with your hashtags, even where you're using two words or three year words, financial literacy. That's you you put that all together as one word. If you separate the word, you, you just lose uh, the second half of the word in, in, in your hashtag. Um, all right, with that. Uh, uh, some, some, the way that I run my practice, uh, some of you might find other ways uh, that work for you best, but just a couple of uh, tri tricks and tips uh, that I employ. First of all, I, I batch my work. Uh, I find it a lot easier to put time on my calendar uh, one day every, what I do is one day every three weeks. I block out about an hour. Doesn't always take me a whole hour to do it, but I'll block out an hour and schedule my next three weeks worth of social media posts. I post three times a week. Uh, I just find it's a lot easier to kind of get in the mode, find my content and get it out there and then, then not think about it again for the next three weeks. And then those things will go out automatically. Uh, all of you probably have uh, some type of a process within your respective company or res your respective agency uh, that you know submits that article for compliance approval before you put it in. Uh, if you you know if you don't 
know the rules around uh, compliance and regulatory oversight on your on your social media posts. Make sure you reach out to your agency control officer, your, your respective compliance person to do that. Um, I think for the most part, that's kind of it. Um, I, you can uh, go if you wish. Um, the, the two social media sites that I use for the most part, as I mentioned, it would be either a Facebook business page or a LinkedIn profile. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Weathington Financial. Uh, that's spelled W-E-T-H-I-N-G-T-O-N. You can find me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash I-N forward slash Brad Weathington Financial. And I'll go ahead and pop my screen on here uh, if I can You pop my screen on and I'll show you kind of what those pages look like. I'm sure we've all seen a Facebook or you know, a, a LinkedIn page, but um, just a, a couple of things that I can point out to you. So uh, first of all, uh, on your own Facebook page, uh, you should be able to go in and see um, your, let's see where I'm at. Yeah, you, you can go in and see all of your posts. So um, here you'll see, for example, this one uh, just came out a day ago. Uh, I use Life Happens. Uh, Life Happens is, is a, uh, a not-for-profit organization uh, specifically designed to promote uh, life insurance and disability insurance and investment principles in our industry. Uh, they used to be an independent uh, outfit. They were just recently or just recently merged with NAFA in the last handful of months. Um, they put out great content. You can go to their website and you can copy and paste this information and uh, get information out to your clients. You know, you can see an example of, there, of that there. Um, looks like I've got two posts that went out today. I think that was just because I shared this one uh, kind of ad hoc. But you'll see the pattern. This one came out four days ago. This one about six days ago. So I typically will post Monday, Wednesday, and Friday each week. Um, you'll see when you go through your posts, you'll see how many people see that post. So this one that I just posted a day ago has already been seen 46 times. Uh, scroll down a little bit. Uh, this one was kind of a just a, a thank you to a, a colleague in our industry. Typically when you're mentioning another person or you're posting a picture that is of you, know, you the people that, you're, that, that would know you or people within your uh, natural market um, or, or your target audience, those will get a lot more views than if you're just posting uh, random informational type articles. Right, so again, you can see there's 89 impressions there, 92 impressions, and so forth. But look at the difference, right? So here we've got, you know, again, just a standard educational piece about monthly uh, market insights. 73 people viewed that. But when we've got a picture, uh, Chris and I uh, represented our uh, our uh, local uh, NAFA chapter uh, in uh, participating in the the NAFA Congressional Conference last month, you can see that that particular picture, picture of us standing at the Capitol uh, had a lot more views than you know, your typical uh, just news article. Um, Facebook, uh, again, most of your, your uh, compliance officers, your compliance departments are gonna require that you use a Facebook business page as opposed to your Facebook personal page. So you'll see that's exactly what I've done here. Uh, I post the same article to LinkedIn as I do to Facebook. I'm, I'm evaluating whether I'll continue to do that. And I'll show you why here in just a minute. Uh, again, this is a matter of knowing your audience. In LinkedIn, right, which are historically, traditionally, you're, you're more professional people. These are our associates and colleagues. They're, they're you know, target uh, audiences of 
uh, business owners or, or professional organizations or professional people, I get a lot more uh, views, a lot more engagement than I do off of my Facebook page. Again, in a different business, it's complete opposite. I, I probably get 10 to 15 times more hits on Facebook than I do on LinkedIn. It just depends on, on what your, your product is and who your target audience is. Um, so I'll, I'm, I'm considering trying to change what uh, content I'll put on my Facebook page as opposed to my LinkedIn page to see if I can increase the participation. Uh, you saw all the likes and all the views on my LinkedIn page. When I go through my uh, Facebook page, you can see uh, I just don't get the same uh, volume of activity. So that's something that I need to work on. Again, it's just a matter of managing your activity and, and targeting your, your market. You see it, there's just, I'm sure it's seen. I'm sure a lot of people see it. We, they don't, uh, uh, Facebook doesn't count it like LinkedIn, LinkedIn does as far as who sees it. They only count it really if, if somebody engages with you, clicks clicks on the, the uh, uh, link or actually uh, posts a comment. But you'll see if I look at the, uh, the uh, results, right? In the last 28 days on, on Facebook, I've only reached 58 people and had one post engagement. When I get, go back over to my uh, LinkedIn page, um, so in the last seven days alone, I've had 287 post impressions. Um, and... Yeah, in the last seven days, 317 uh, post impressions, uh, 69 actual you know, views of my content uh, in the last 90 days. Um, so those are, that's what I'm doing. Um, uh, Chris, maybe uh, I'll turn it back to you and, and uh, talk about any other questions that you had or any other ideas that, that, that you think that uh, maybe I should address uh, as part of this. Yeah, just, just my one comment, Bray. Could you talk about how you leverage your NAFA membership through social media? Yeah, thanks. So again, if you want to, if you want to engage in on your social media, what you, you'll do a lot better if you are bringing other people or other organizations into the mix. Uh, when you go in and tag another person, uh, you know, your post now appears on your page, but also on their page, right? So it increases the, the visibility. Uh, it, you're, you're almost certainly going to engage at least the person or organization that you tag, right? So, so it just increases uh, your viewership and increases the, the level of engagement. Every opportunity that I get uh, if I'm if I'm posting content that's relative or, or certainly around NAFA or NAFA Indiana, uh, I will either tag them in that post uh, or I will use a hashtag uh, NAFA proud or or we are NAFA, and uh, that just increases the the, uh, the viewership of it. Let's see if I can give you an example of that. Now I'll get there. Yeah, I, I thought I had one pretty close to the top of the page, but um, yeah. Yeah, so here's, here's an example of that. Um, NAPE Indiana put out a post uh, about a week ago, join us uh, Thursday for a CE sponsorship, uh, CE sponsored by Nave Indiana. So uh, just liking that page or putting a comment on ultimately promotes that page, right? It, 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 it puts your name out there, but it also promotes that page. Uh, another thing that you can do, uh, here's another one uh, where Nave has a post uh, came out about a day ago, you know, recognizing those NAFA members who have been uh, in the industry for, I'm sorry, been members of NAFA for 50, 51 years, right? So again, comment, tag NAFA Indiana, tag NAFA, 
uh, or use the uh, the hashtags. Let's see if I can the hashtags like NAFA Proud or we are NAFA. Um, to answer your question. Yes, I just th I really appreciate you coming on, Brad, spending so much time with to, to encourage our members and uh, and show them how you use social media effectively. And I also want to encourage our members to use the, re the additional resources NAFA provides to them uh, uh, to promote their practices, and, 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 and particularly in the use of social media. Yeah, and uh, my. Uh... I'm available if, if anybody has any questions or they just like to bounce an idea. I, you know, maybe, maybe I'll pick up an, an idea or two from you, something that you're doing that's working. Uh, but I'd be happy to answer any questions about any of the information I shared. Uh, you can reach me uh, by phone at 317-571-2365. Or you can reach me by email. It's Brad dot Weathington again spelled W E T H I N G T O N. I just recognized my name's on the screen, or the spellings on the on the screen, so you, you'll find it that way. Brad dot Weathington at L F G C O dot com. Thanks a lot, Brad. I appreciate your effort, and I think with that announcement, you've probably extended your workday about two more hours. If our members are smart enough to call you and ask for assistance, <laughs> thanks so much. You're welcome.